All right, welcome back everybody. So this week's a little bit different. I'm gonna kind of ramble on a little bit um, about a few things. And the reason is I had totally intended on doing the CIC uh, pigmented 2K polyurethane, but I've just had so much going on that I just have not, I did not have a chance to shoot it and get the dry times and everything. So we'll reconvene on that next week. But I did wanna let you know about a product that I stumbled upon. Um, it's not new, but it's a Sayer Lac. And I was under the assumption that you couldn't do dark colors with it. So what happened is, is this job I'm working on for um, Michael Austin Fine Carpentry. You can find him on Instagram. Called for a matte sheen. And I was going to do it in the Malaysi uh, 2K because that's the only product um, that I've found. Malaysi and Renner seem to be the only ones that have figured out to have like a neutral base. Um, for darker colors so that you can put heavier loads in it um, without having to do a color coat and clear over the top of it which is a fine way to do it and we'll discuss that at a different time um, but um, I called them because HGH didn't have it and I got to talking and they didn't actually have it in the pigmented either to do this and so um, we ended up um, talking and I didn't know that they sold uh, Sayer Lac which I thought was manufactured by um, Sherwin Williams but it's actually Becker Acroma um, they actually um, Sherwin Williams acquired Becker Acroma and Sayer Lac several years ago I think it's been close to maybe 10 years and uh, Becker Acroma you'll see on the old Woodweb post guy saying I went to Becker well Becker makes the Sayer Lac from what I understand Becker Acroma um, so anyway he carries this product and um, so I got some and tried it and I, I really liked it and I used it with the cross linker and we're gonna look at this with the cross linker in it I'm gonna show you the durability and some of the kind of issues that you can have with this low sheen stuff too um, but first off, I would like to say that Clark um, Deco and DC Clark is probably one of the best um, reps and um, finished companies that I've I've done business with. Um, they thought there might have been a little bit of issue with the color. They called me, sent me pictures, made sure it was all right. They didn't just ship it out and hope for the best. So I appreciate that. Um, I will be doing more business with these guys, but these guys are real professional. Um, DC Clark really knows his finishing stuff. I know just by talking to him, he, he understands some of the issues that are out there. He's trying to find products to fill those voids for folks. Um, and um, he understands finishers, so that's really, really cool. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I've had so many problems with HGH and the water base, I'm gonna actually probably switch because they got this out to me in three days. I got this in three days, which is the same that I could get from my local store. And the color was dead on and everything. So if you guys are looking for the Sayer Lack and you don't wanna deal with Sherwin-Williams, um, they have it. Um, All right, so without further ado, let's get into testing this pigmented Sayer Lack. Let's get to it. Okay, so one of the issues with this low sheen stuff is it shows everything, and it's it's a little bit harder finish to do um, because you just can't get away with a lot. But one of the issues is what they call the burnishing. So if I take my fingernail and I scratch it, you can see it glosses it, and there's no way to really um, get that off. Now, um, so that's one of the problems with the low sheens. Now, I've ordered in some five sheen in the clear to see if you put a clear over this, how that affects that that burnishing um, effect like that, okay? Um, again, you wouldn't see this in a 20 degree sheen because it's gonna reflect the light differently. So that's something to be cognizant of when you're talking about low sheens with your clients. Um, okay guys, so I just stumbled onto a um, interesting thing with this, is if you get a burnish mark like that and you wanna get it out, um, and you put the cross linker in it, you can just take this denatured alcohol and just wipe over your surface and it'll even it out and it'll take that right out, that burnish mark right out. That's interesting. 
Okay, so this is with the denatured alcohol on it. Um, pretty good, just kind of barely um, mars the surface. I would have shown you this one, but this one's been uh, rubbed several times, so this is more of an accurate reading on it. And then we have our lacquer thinner, which cut through the surface, and then our acetone, which did um, pretty well. So that's kind of the chemical resistance of the pigmented with the crosslinker added. All right, so let's look at the mar resistance. All right, so the mar resistance is similar to what we saw with the other. So the mar resistance is good, and I'm not gonna bother um, testing the adhesion um, on it. But um, anyway, let me give you my final thought. All right, so what's my final thoughts? Um, well, I really like to say, or like I think for the money, it's one of the ones that's hard to beat, which I've said that before. Um, I don't think that the pigment, even with the pigment with the crosslinker in it is quite as good as the clear, um, with the clear over the top of it. Now, I want to mention something. Um, I just got invited by, um, Brian Kuhn. I think that's how he pronounces his last name. And, um, they're part of the, uh, professional cabinet, um, and door refinishers group on Facebook and they've asked me to come in um, and have some links to my videos and kind of join in, in the discussion um, so I want to thank them and so if you're not a part of that um, go check that out and like their page and join in there's a lot of um, good stuff on there I even learned some stuff myself a lot of guys um, uh, and, and ladies as well um, I don't want to leave you all out to some really excellent uh, women finishers out there um, as well as men. And um, but some of these guys have gotten really some of these men and women have got really creative and are brushing on like Kim Aqua and rolling on and uh, a lot of these 1K pro products and even 2K products. And I was really impressed by that. And I'm going to give that a shot and we'll talk about that on the channel and I'll let you know what my thoughts are on it. Um, but really cool stuff. A lot of. Um, a lot of smart and uh, incredibly talented finishers over there, so I'm, I'm happy to be a part of that. But on that note, I know that uh, Shane Woods, he's got a, a, a really good Facebook live feed, and a lot of people have been giving him crap about um, putting clears over his finishes and the debate on that. So here's the deal. If you put a clear over a pigmented finish, um, it's going to perform better. You got better chemical resistance, better mar resistance, but there are some drawbacks to that. Um, now, personally for me, if I'm doing a large kitchen, um, I really don't want to put a clear over the top of all that um, just because of the touch-up issues and reject issues. I want to be able to just bam, 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 bam. Because inadvertently, if you use that method, unless you've got a... a a setup where um, things are going down a finish line because um, there's a lot of cabinet manufacturers um, that I used to install that that's how they did it um, they would put sealer coats uh, like a conversion varnish they would do a seal coat a uh, two coats of color conversion varnish and then a clear over the top of that to give them that extra durability so it is a legit way to do it the problem is what I found with smaller shops is is the is the rejects um, in terms of like rework and so it's just from a production standpoint if you're using pigmented uh, there's way less rework than there is when you're putting clears over top of it because you get a hair or something in there and it really shows up so um, but what he's doing is actually um, an excellent way to do it so stop giving him crap um, let him do his thing so a little bit different this week uh, I hope you liked it um, and we will catch you next week uh, you can catch me on Instagram at Eric Reason Facebook at Eric Reason and you can also find me in the professional uh, cabinet refinishers and door refinishers uh, web page thank you again Brian for inviting me on and remember test don't guess We'll catch you next week.